Hi, so we're back at Thornish and we're revisiting the cosmos. You're aware that we like to keep you updated with uh, what's actually happening in the night sky and early in the morning. So I've just got a little printout of some special events that we can see in July. And we're going to be starting quite early on in July um, with the 4th of July. Um, I think that's American Independence Day, isn't it? So uh, on that day, we are going to know that the Earth is actually the furthest away that it can be at this time from the Sun. And it's 152 million kilometres away um, from, from the Sun. As it travels around the Sun, it's actually moving in an elliptic, an egg-shaped movement around the Sun, as do all of the other planets. So we're actually the furthest away that we can be. Moving on through the month, we're going to actually see again the Moon lying very, very close to Saturn and Jupiter. Uh, we've mentioned this uh, last uh, visit to the cosmos, and um, the uh, two planets, uh, Saturn and Jupiter, are sitting in um, the constellation uh, quite close to Sagittarius. So we'll see the Moon very, very um, early in the morning, um, quite close to these two planets that's worth to look out for. That's going to be around about sort of from about five o'clock in the morning. Now moving on a little bit further through the month there's a couple of other things that we'd like to highlight. Uh, Jupiter that we've just mentioned is actually in opposition to the Sun and this is quite a, a major uh, uh, distance. Uh, 619 million kilometers away from the Sun when it's completely visible in the sky but totally opposite to the position of the Sun. So that's another thing that we can think about when we're viewing Jupiter close to Saturn. Now also something that's happening, um, we've been talking a little bit about Venus and uh, Venus now as we know from our last um, catch up is now a morning star and Venus is actually going to be in the constellation of Taurus, Taurus the Bull and it's going to be very close to something, one of the major stars in Taurus is actually what's known sometimes as the Eye of Taurus. It's um, Aldebaran and um, close to Aldebaran we'll see Venus but also we'll see the Crescent Moon and that's going to be happening uh, between the 16th and the 18th of July and that's going to be quite early again in the morning so you know you can each be up a little bit early for this one it's around about 4 30 in the morning that you'll get the best view of this now on the 20th of July we mentioned uh, Jupiter being in opposition to the Sun but on the 20th Saturn will be in opposition to the Sun and this is a another um, uh, large distance 1,346 million kilometres away from the Sun. So that gives you some understanding when we're saying that we're seeing Jupiter and Saturn close together in one constellation, they're actually a vast dif uh, distance apart. Um, something else that we might want to think about is that we've mentioned Taurus as being one of the, um, the Earth signs. Uh, I have another little chart here because under a, a biodynamic um, principle that we practice here at Thornage, you'll see on this coloured chart that you might be able to pick out Taurus the bull, the, the bull symbol, and it's actually coloured brown and it's labelled there as an earth symbol. Okay. Now this is telling us that the moon is travelling through all of the 12 constellations over a period of about 27 days roughly one calendar month and through that month we'll see that it moves from um, an earth uh, constellation through to a warmth constellation the warmth being very active for any fruit crops uh, we've also then move on to water or leaf crops and then on to flower and seed crops the air and the light symbol that you can see there and then quite quickly it will move back to another earth symbol that's actually the uh, constellation of the goat that we're seeing um, just down the bottom here okay <clears throat> so under a biodynamic principle we like to just keep a bit of an idea of the traveling of the, the moon through the constellations it gives us an 
understanding of good times or favourable times, if you like, to actually work with the soil and work with the different parts of the plant that we want to eat. And early in July, around about the 6th of July, we are knowing that there's going to be a very positive earth trine, uh, an earth um, force, if you like, and this will be the time that we're going to investigate our early potatoes out in the field. So we're going to bring you a video about that so you can get a bit of an understanding of what our early potatoes look like. But not only that, the quality and the flavour of those potatoes will be heightened because of that favourable force coming from the moon and other planets within that area in the sky. So I know that's a lot of information. I hope you've enjoyed that. It's a very busy month for July, but hopefully we'll catch up with you again and hope that you can see some of those events that are taking place.